Hey everyone, this is the second update for Rails UI. I wanted to do, I guess, just an overview of what's what's happened um, in the recent updates. This time of year, it's the end of 2022, around Christmas time almost. So progress has been a little slow, but it's coming along. I've officially kind of set up what I think a first theme will be with uh, Rails UI and basically conceptualizing what a theme is with Rails UI, the underlying frameworks that will come with it and how I'll ship it, all those little details of software that are kind of hard to solve if something's kind of new. So the, the general idea of Rails UI is going to end up being a, I think I've decided it's going to be a Ruby gem, but it's actually an engine kind of like um, sidekick or something if you've used that where it mounts to the app the sidekick UI I should say taking that a step further and just kind of integrating it straight into newly created rails app is going to be the approach I take with this so I said it before I think um, or I've written it somewhere where this is mostly going to be applicable to new apps instead of tr existing apps so you can't just quite install rails UI on an existing app as of yet mostly because I won't know in your existing app like what assets you have, um, what design frameworks you're using, all those things. So it's kind of hard to predict. Maybe there's a future for that. I'll quit rambling. The whole idea of this video is kind of just to walk you through um, the installation process as of today. It's it's not without errors. So this is definitely like an alpha version, but I just wanted to kind of show you the progress, what steps you'll take when you want to use Rails UI and more. I would expect 100% this all to evolve and change. So don't take it you know as the source of truth for everything with this but it's just going to be the approach i take so i've created a brand new rails application on my desktop here I'm calling it retriever 2 simply because i have a retriever theme that i've actually pioneered rails ui with because a lot of this has been completely in the dark stopping not just to show and tell at this point um, my goal was to get four themes done by the end of the year Probably not going to happen. It's probably going to be more like two or even less. Um, I do have the first theme done, the retriever theme. If you don't know why I'm calling it dog names, I don't know either. That's just something I took and ran with. So there's quite a few that are coming. Just be forewarned there. But um, I wanted to show you just, this is a brand new Rails vanilla app. It is, you know, it's using the defaults that come with Rails 7 as of today. So what I want to do is install Rails UI and as of right now, I only have it locally um, in the app. Oops, I'm gonna go to the app itself, go into the gem file, and I'm gonna add a gem that's gonna be, I'll move this over real quick so it's not in the way. Gem, Rails UI is what it's actually called. And then I'm actually gonna pass, you can pass a path for a gem instead of a, you know, some third party resource remotely or GitHub. Um, I don't know how I'll serve this at the end of the day. It might be something that's account based or I'm not really sure, but I'm going to try to serve it in such a way that's easy to use, but I don't want it to be something that's just like a pain for me to update, I guess is, is the short answer there, but more details that I'll have to iron out. So I've got that path locally. I'm two steps up in a couple folders to get this installed. So I'm just going to install it this way just to show and tell we'll do bundle. Run that, it'll go fetch just the assets that are local. I am running this in another instance. I use Tailwind locally to develop the gym. So it's kind of confusing, but I'm using some modern assets to make that UI look good within the gym. That's also an app since it's an engine. And then we're mounting it to a new app, which is gonna be the app you create um, that will run you know, alongside it and kind of inherit a lot of things from it. So if you've never researched engines or anything like that, it might be good to go look that up. You won't really need to understand any of it to use Rails UI because I'll have a documentation all laid out, which I'll show you here. I actually created some documentation this time around, but the idea is to you know make it seamless, simple to install. You don't have to think about it since the design is done for you, um, which is something Rails, the whole point of the project really is something that's been lacking in my opinion. So with it installed, we we have it ready to roll. I want to show you the tasks that come with it. If you do Rails uh, two dashes and or two hyphens tasks, you can see all the Rails tasks that come with the framework. There are a lot, uh, but with Rails UI, there's going to be even more. So sorry in advance, but that's gonna, that list is going to grow quite a bit because I'll need to install these. Um, programmatically and the easiest way to do that is with rake tasks as I've found so far. So 
the real first step here is of course installing the gem but actually installing the assets and necessary things to make rails ui work we need to do an actual installation generator uh, which is behind the scenes of this task so i will run that now that'll go fetch specific assets that you use that all rails ui themes will use um, it'll configure it to use es builds instead of import maps um, doing a lot of find and replace with um, like the Thor gem, I think is what I used. Yeah. Simply because Rails ships with import maps and I've tried to, f I wanted to make it to where you didn't have to pass a ton of flags when creating a new app to, you know, customize it for Rails UI. And instead Rails UI does that for you after the fact. It's a little cumbersome, but it works. Um, also copying some open source icons to the library just to have it, you know, one and done. So you can add and remove those as needed or remove those as needed. And then um, I have this little fancy nil ASCII art at the end that I added, which was a fun little project in itself. Uh, but if you go back in time, you could see basically everything that's been installed. I did install Devise by default with this project simply because I want to use the views that come with Devise. If you run that Rails generator, if you've used Devise in the past, it ships with some themes or not themes, some views that you can configure. And that's been one of my biggest like pain points with rails is always have reinvent the wheel on those views so i wanted to solve for that as well as some email layouts so you'll see that in this update um so let's let's fire it up basically at this point with it installed you run the server and it'll boot to your normal localhost 3000 by default if you you know you can pass a different port there if you need to depending on what you're running and i'll go to localhost this is going to default to a new static page that I created for Rails UI specifically. And since it's a new app, I made it just default to this and you can change this in your routes easily. Uh, but there's a couple actions here. I predict this will update, but you can read the docs, which are new. I'll show you those and installation steps, which basically just did those. And then some other stuff around configuring theming design system, etc. So a lot of this stuff is, is still a work in progress, but I, I wanted to get it going. Um, I predict the, the docs will be hosted remotely too, but right now I have them within the, the gym itself just for the sake of being really quick to find um, and easy to, to refer to. There's some FAQs as well too. So I'll be adding to that as I go. Right now, the big step after installation though is to go to the configuration screen. And that's after, actually what you'll see on the very first the big purple button here, configure your app. So you'll go there first. Here you can set, I've just basically did a laundry list of things that will happen essentially in this process. And I, I purposely made it opinionated. I know with design you can tweak every little thing, but I feel like that's the whole point of this is to decide that for you since most of the people, I feel like maybe I'm wrong, many developers aren't so design centric. So that's kind of where I, I feel like I bridge that gap personally. I'm, I'm more of a designer first. And then I came into the rails world and a lot of people are that way. But because rails can be, you know, a one person framework that you create an entire app on your, on your own. And it's, you know, it's, it's possible. So, but I think for the most majority of developers out there, it might be the opposite. So you'll be a developer first and then you know a little bit about design, but maybe not have the, be the best chops. So hence Rails UI. All that to say, let's go and you can add an application name. It's mostly just to add like title tags and stuff to your app, make it simple um, and one less step to do. Then you create at this first iteration, what framework you're gonna use. Right now, since I only have the bootstrap theme complete, the first theme is gonna be what I start with. At this phase, when you, when you um, select that, you're gonna be prompted to select a theme to go along with it. Again, I only have this first one here done. And I think I've shown this in the past, but if not, I, I do have previews for each theme. And the idea around a theme is more or less a cohesive starting point for your design. It's not gonna be the source of truth per se, but I will be making um, themes that come with specific pages that will probably be on most SaaS apps. Um, at least the marketing stuff, as well as some of the admin level stuff, if that happens uh, to be your case. Probably focusing mostly on SaaS based apps to start, but there's all, of course, you know, analytic tools, marketing tools, all those things that could be in a Rails application, everything under the sun, really. 
So the idea with these themes is to kind of provide you with a, a go-to starting point for specific pages in particular like pricing or an about page. Um, so here's the retriever one to start with. All fictitious, but just kind of stuff I've seen in the wild that I feel like is good, modern, um, and works well with the framework that we chose, which is Bootstrap. So this is all Bootstrap CSS here. In the future, there will be more pages to those themes. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and save this down. It'll go and at this point, install your framework. And it does take a little bit because it's installing Bootstrap. It's copying over some assets, um, tweaking the vanilla Rails app to work alongside these new assets and so forth. So be patient when this when this page loads, but it's gonna be worth the time. Conflict, let's forcefully do this real quick. I had an issue with the install. So instead, let's do it from the task point of view. Uh, normally you wouldn't need to do this. The configuration step would do it for you, but I'm gonna do it just for the sake of this guide to give you get you going on the, the right step. Um, this is where it, it um, messed up. I didn't have a force copy under the hood. So I'll just hit yes here and it'll do that. And we'll wait for that to install. Cool, so I'll reboot the theme over here and we'll be able to boot the app. Here it comes. All right, so our theme is installed at this point. And with that done, essentially you can go check out, you know, a design system. And this is only available once you've installed a CSS framework. Um, so bootstrap to start is where I headed. And the system's gonna be a pre-configured set of standards that you're gonna just be able to use in your app wherever you need it. So everything from buttons to form elements to alerts, etc., is solved for. So th that's kind of the, the holy grail, in my opinion, to getting this going and getting it, uh, you know, being a viable project for you guys out there that are needing a design in your Rails apps from the start, from the get-go. So there's all kinds of stuff, especially with Bootstrap, there's a lot to that framework. So this one's gonna be pretty verbose to start with, uh, but you see everything from, you know, fancy typography has been accounted for um, all the way down to, to button elements and whatnot. So here's some buttons. So included in the design, system is going to be just a few bit of snippets per typical rails apps out there i, I know some of you guys do haml um erb is the de facto standard you know and then of course html is just mostly for re reference it's not necessarily going to be you know the the best use case um, for rails specifically but erb is pretty pretty good for that i did mention this in the the documentation but um, view component and stuff like that. Those third party libraries that kind of bolt onto rails as well are in my peripheral view, I should say it's something I'll consider as this grows. Um, but I think for now we're going to keep it simple just so you can get quick into, you know, using these assets as ERB and not have to like go copy stuff from other libraries. That's all JavaScript based stuff. So that's kind of, you know, the, the, the awesomeness of it, I guess, as I would say, looks like there's a bug there. I'll fix that. But um, back in the configuration page, I just wanted to highlight one couple more things. There'll be a portion here where you'll have pages that you can actually include in the theme that we saw in that demo before. It's optional, but my goal here is to add add these as we as I progress, basically. So there'll be quite a few um, um, pages you can add related to, like I said, SAS in the beginning, and then I'll branch out basically maybe make categories. So there might be like a whole little, uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to look, to be honest, like kind of like a shop uh, that you can configure your app and you know make it, make it tailor fit to what you need for your specific application. So for now, I'll just include both pages. You'll see um, locally, we go ahead and installed, Bootstrap's already installed, so it's not gonna go ahead and install that again. And I believe we have those pages now and you could go preview those locally. That, that's the big difference. This is now in the local app and this is actually hooked into like device and stuff. So here's some of the UI around signing in, signing up. I did all these, um, you know, themed out so they would work with the theme plus the framework. So that's all just solved for, which is great. 
Um, and of course, I think a lot of you will probably ask, well, how do I customize colors, all those things like that. Now, since this is integrated into your app, it's simple to do. You just go into your app itself, your typical assets area. So you go into app assets. You're gonna have a application. If you did bootstrap, you're gonna have that here. You'll see stuff that I've added basically to make the theme work, the design system, et cetera. Um, I did have to namespace this stuff just simply because um, it's a bearer to do alongside Tailwind. This just adds it to the body class and the rest is history. You don't have to even worry about it. It's already done for you. In fact, in the application template, notice it here. So that stuff just gets done when you do that in installation script. And then there's also like customized stuff that I've added alongside it. Now that's all to say you can change every bit of this. That's, that's what I feel like is the cool part and use the frameworks tools to do it. So here is like a secondary color. If you wanted to change that to something else like pink and reload the page, it should compile that right here. You go back now we have pink in the theme and you can customize it well so to me that's pretty cool i i wanted to make it you know solved for but also in a in a way be able to you know tailor fit to what your brand is going to need so my guess as you build your own business or whatever with one of these apps um, you're going to want to make it look authentic you know true to what you're doing so that's how that can scale and make make um it into your app and still look unique as opposed to just looking like everything else out there. So that's the quick and dirty version of this. Um, I was hoping that installation would have gone, sm gone smoother, but it was uh, a little hiccup that I think I understand what went wrong with. So it should be a quick fix. But uh, yeah, all that to say, we've got that all installed now. So I'll go back to my configuration screen. One little fun fact as I um, added a dark theme so if you go dark this should now work with dark theme as well I couldn't help it <laughs> it's uh, quick quick and easy with Tailwind so I just did it um, so everything in here supports that um, also I meant I failed to mention you can look at um, some email templates are going to come stock with this as well so per theme there will be different email designs um, since bootstrap's kind of hard to do and emails are hard to do dark theme, I uh, just went with this route. I'll go back to light so it looks a little better. But the gist is there are some basic emails, th templates you can start with. Here's a transactional one for like an invoice. And then um, all these social links and whatnot are customizable. So it's real easy. Um, I'll go in deeper in like the mini framework within the framework, but because I had to add Rails UI has its own little set of helpers to, to help you out with some view stuff, but it's really minimal. So at the end of the day, it's it's nothing you wouldn't be um, comfortable using already if you're familiar with Rails. I think that's it. I'll probably just wrap up there. Right now I have this retriever theme in basically almost complete. And then there's another one coming that's gonna be the Tailwind version. So there'll be a bootstrap and a Tailwind is my goal before releasing this into an alpha version so everyone can use it. If you're on the list at railsui.com, you, you, you'll basically be the first to know. So um, I'll send an email out. I'm not sure how I'll ship this and distribute it yet, but it will be something that I feel like you can maybe download locally and install it there as opposed to hosting it somewhere where it's um, not final and I don't really want it to be shared too wildly yet if it, if it happened to be um, since it's not complete. So. I'll have more details about that and probably another follow-up and just share what I'll be doing with that in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any feedback. I think one question that might pop up is if some of these elements are gonna have interactivity like JavaScript and the answer is yes, I am gonna do that as opposed to other frameworks out there that kind of forego that. Bootstrap kind of comes with it, but for ta the Tailwind stuff, I do plan to use primarily Stimulus.js and then maybe Alpine if it calls for it, Alpine.js. I could, I, mm, I'll probably lean towards stimulus to just start with, but Alpine has some cool little um, details that go along with that little framework, which is pretty strong and useful. So we'll see what happens there. Um, my goal is to not really make it some crazy JavaScript rendered app. So I doubt I'll tailor fit it to that. Okay, so long for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.